why is it that number six is always the best? Oh, hello. David Zaritsky here for James Bond Lifestyle Video Podcast. I didn't even see you there. Well, welcome back. You remember the first podcast we talked about Tom Ford. Now, no one can argue that he made some incredible clothes. I'm actually wearing the outfit head to toe that he wore when he saw Mathis in Italy. But unfortunately, as all of you know, we're in a recession. So this particular video podcast is how to get that Bond look for less. Now, some of you have already heard this story or perhaps even read an article. I don't like to be redundant. So we're going to focus on three different main points in getting the Bond look. But first, let's talk about the Bond look. As you can see, I've got the Tom Ford cardigan on, the shirt. I've got the Quantum of Solace watch on. I even have the Prada belt, the Levi Stay Press almond pants, and even the Churcher's Rider 3. So I've got the whole outfit. Um, and I've got to say this softly because my wife is one floor away. But this outfit costs, and usually I don't talk about these type of things because it's tacky, $6,660 for the entire thing. We're in a recession, folks. $6,660. Don't panic. Please don't panic. Because with the magic of the internet, I'm going to show you how to get this look for less. Watch this. There we go. The look for less. This entire look, going from $6,000 to $660, is $240. We've got a $100 watch, which takes up the bulk of it. We've got a $40 Old Navy cardigan, which is actually very comfortable. Yes, you're going to give up certain things. The pockets are different. The buttons are a little bit different, which you can replace. But these particular pants are Levi's pants again. They're the same almond color. They're just not stay press and not exactly the right ones. As we slowly keep going down, right here, we find some hush puppy shoes. Now, everybody nowadays makes these desert chaka boots. You can find them for $40, $45. And right here, we have an H&M shirt, same color, same type of buttons as the Tom Ford shirt. The look for less. Oh, and if you want to sell it even harder, you can still pick up the relatively inexpensive compared to everything else Tom Ford glasses to produce the look. Now here's hint number one, and always remember this. Comfort, folks, okay? No matter how hard you try, no matter how many clothes you buy of the Bond era, you're not James Bond. I know, it's like telling you there's no Santa Claus. But the truth of the matter is, is that go for comfort. Rule number one, go for comfort. This is cotton. I've had so many people write to me, they bought Zara or Magnolia, it's acrylic, it's wool. They're sitting there itching, they're uncomfortable. Why? Always go for comfort. Get the right size, get the right feel, you'll be happy. The other reason, besides the recession, to get the James Bond look for less is because these clothes are kind of precious. They're collectible items. I have a friend that actually snagged his Tom Ford cardigan onto something. There was a pull. Now he's in therapy. It's ugly. So this is why you want to get the Tom Ford, the James Bond look for less. Okay, we're on to the next look at the end of the movie. Now, if you can't get a hold of a Tom Ford blue navy polo, which chances are you can't, um, or the Prada belt, or even the Seven of Mankind jeans, or of course the church's Rider 3 again, then what's a person to do? Well, this particular look is a bit prohibitive, it's difficult to find, and again, the watch makes it stand out as far as not a really good recession bond look. Again, let's ask the magic of the internet to help us, okay? And here we go. Something that's more affordable and obtainable. So here we've got the Sunspell shirt. I mean, hey, if it was good enough for Casino Royale, why can't we wear it in place of the Quantum of Solace Tom Ford shirt? Between you and me, I like the fit a little bit better anyway. And as far as jeans are concerned, certainly a lot less expensive are the Lee Butchot 
Levi's 501 jeans. Get the 501s, they're a little bit more slim fit, just like the uh, 7 of Mankind. They've got that dark indigo look, and they'll do just the trick. But, it wouldn't be complete without the Harrington jacket. Now this particular one, I bought from Land's End for $40. The Tom Ford jacket probably costs the production about $4,000, and you still can't get the right one from Tom Ford today. But here's rule number two, fit. Fit is very important. I usually take a 40 to 41 regular or a medium sized jacket like this. Land's End, because it's made for the huskier American patron, if you will, I had to get a small. So always remember, think about going a size smaller if you're buying from particular brands. Land's End, uh, those particular places, uh, even if you go to Target, JCPenney's, Banana Republic, J. Crew is a little bit more true to size like the European size, and then if you go to the European sizes like Sunspell and some of the other ones, Mark Spencer, they're a little bit truer and slim fitted to size. But as you can see, this small Land's End fits like a medium. It's perfect, and you know what? For $40, it does the trick. Well, here we are getting very comfortable at the one and only club in the Bahamas. Ah, the Bahamas breeze, there's nothing like it. But as you can see, we've transgressed a little bit to Casino Royale, just to prove a point. Sometimes the most budget conscious thing is not to be budget conscious, to get the right thing. For example, this particular Alfani shirt, which was a last minute replacement in the movie, for the one that Lindy Hemming was going to use, can be found on eBay all the time for about $30 to $35. The correct one. Why would you try to get a less expensive one? It doesn't make sense. The only thing you need to do is to change the sides, go bring it to your local seamstress or tailor, and for $5, they've made it the one from Casino Royale. The pants from Ted Baker, again, you can find them at Ted Baker or something like it. For a very reasonable amount of money, why would you try to get anything else? Sure, you can go to Banana Republic, you can go to J. Crew, you can go to other places, but you're going to pay the same amount. Sometimes it's not worth it to be budget conscious. Get the correct one, and that will be budget conscious of you. Here we've got a very interesting experiment. Two pairs of very nice shoes. One of them is a pair of Cole Hans. One of them is a Phillips, as some of you could recognize right away. But I defy you if you're walking down the street to really tell. For those of you with sharp eyes, wait till you get to my teeth, these are the Phillips, of course. These are the Cole Hans. But you can bet on a rainy day, or if I think I'm going to be walking outside of an office, I'm sure as hell going to be wearing the Cole Hans, and not the Phillips. My point being is that church is a wonderfully well-made pair of shoes as are Cole Haan, but for the budget conscious Bond out there, a black cap toe Cole Hans that costs 75 to $80 is certainly a better bet than the churches. Let me tell you the third rule, and it's a little story about a young man who thought he could be Bond by buying the right outfits, by buying the right things. Oh boy, uh, was he out of his mind. That young man was me. Let me tell you something. Remember one thing, and this is going to fly in the face of everything I've said so far. One of the things you have to remember is that these clothes are an investment. If you want a Tom Ford cardigan, spend the money. I've bought four cardigans before this cardigan. If I had only focused and targeted this particular one, I probably would have had it by now. Well, I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope you go out there and search Target and all those wonderful places on the internet for a more budget conscious, recession proof type of Bond outfit. Until the next time, this has been David Zaritsky for James Bond Lifestyle Video Podcast. See you soon.